everyone, my name is Kayla and welcome back for another week of Monster Munchies! So the theme for this week is meringues and I am going all out this week. I'm making something that I've never made before. Um, I will be making eel flottant or floating islands, which is a poached meringue that you put in a bowl or sea of creme anglaise. Um, this was featured in, I believe, season four of Great British Bake Off as one of the technical challenges, and I'm going to be giving it a shot today. So let's give it a try. The ingredients for this will be 300 milliliters of heavy cream, 300 milliliters of milk, six eggs, egg whites, six egg yolks, a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. If you don't have vanilla paste, you can also sub vanilla extract, or you could use a whole vanilla bean when you're simmering your milk. Um, you'll also need some sugar. Um, there's three parts to this recipe. There's the meringues, there's the creme anglaise, and then I'm going to top it with sponge sugar. So for the meringues you'll need 150 grams of sugar and for the creme anglaise and the sponge sugar each you'll need 100 grams of sugar. So I have them all measured out into separate bowls. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my 300 milliliters of cream, 300 milliliters of whole milk, and a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste into a high-sided pan. And I'm going to set that on around medium heat and bring it up to a really gentle simmer. So while I'm waiting for that to come up to temperature, I'm going to get out my good old friend Henry and I'm going to put the egg whites into a bowl. And I'm going to beat my egg whites with a hand mixer until they form stiff peaks. And once your meringue comes to a nice stiff peak that holds its shape, you're going to start adding the sugar little by little to it until it comes back up to a stiff and glossy peak. Make sure you use the 150 grams of sugar for this. And if your milk starts coming up to a nice gentle simmer, you can turn it down to low heat for now. So once all your sugar is incorporated, your meringue should hold nice stiff shiny peaks like this. Kind of looks like a slug. So by this point, your milk should be putting off a good amount of steam, maybe have a few little bubbles in it, and it's ready for the meringues to start poaching in it. So now to make my meringue canals, I'm gonna dip two spoons into some cold water so that the meringue doesn't stick to it. And then I'm going to scoop as best as I can some nice attractive canals, which is harder than I thought it would be. And then I'm gonna put them in the poaching liquid. And in theory, there should be enough meringue for about six of these. Get 
seven in there. I hate wasting things. So now I have my meringues sitting in my poaching liquid. They are not nearly as pretty as I hoped they would be, but they'll be fine. Um, so at this point, I'm going to put my stove on very low. I am going to cover this pan and I'm gonna poach these guys for a total of nine to 10 minutes. Um, and I'm gonna flip them over halfway through. So it's been five minutes. It's time to flip these guys over. Uh, careful. Woof. And they'll go to sleep for another five minutes or so. So now it's been about 10 minutes total. I had a pretty unsuccessful flipping in the middle, but now we're gonna take these meringues out and put them on a wire rack to drain and cool, hopefully. this a little closer. So now our meringues are cooked. We have these little failure bits to snack on. Never has failure tasted so good. It's now time to make our creme anglaise. So first what I'm gonna do is very carefully pour this poaching liquid through a sieve into a pot. Close your eyes and pray. Mm -hmm. So by putting that through a sieve, you get rid of any weird lumps, extra little meringue bits left behind. So now I'm gonna keep this on super low heat. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do is whisk 100 grams of sugar into our six egg yolks. Okay, so my egg yolks and sugar are mixed together. They're nice and smooth. The next and perhaps most important step when you're making a crown glaze or any kind of custard is tempering your egg yolks. If you put the egg yolks straight into a hot mixture, you'll have sweet, scrambled eggs, which no one really wants. So you have to slowly get the egg yolks used to the hot liquid. So what I'm gonna do is take a ladle of this milk cream mixture, put it in and mix it up. I'm gonna do that a couple times until I feel like my egg yolks and poaching liquid have incorporated enough that it's safe to put it back into the saucepan. So now I feel like my egg yolks have gotten used to the heat. I'm going to put them back into the saucepan over a low heat and continually whisk it until thickened. And you really do need to continually whisk this. If you let it sit too long, then you'll get scrambled eggs. 
I'm gonna switch from a whisk to a wooden spoon at this point. We don't really need any more air into the mixture. And a good way to tell when this is done is when it will coat the back of a wooden spoon. Once your creme anglaise is thickened, move it off of the heat and set it aside until we're ready for it. So now we have our meringues, we have our creme anglaise, and there's just one more part left to this dessert. Um, I'm gonna make some sponge sugar to put on top to make it look extra fancy. So I'm going to put 100 grams of sugar into a pot and put it over medium heat and let it melt without touching it. Um, if you stir the sugar at all, crystals will form and it'll ruin your caramel. So I'm just gonna let it sit over medium heat until it reaches like a nice deep golden brown color. Once your sugar is all melted and a nice golden brown color, take it off the heat and let it sit for a minute before we start working on the sponge sugar. And to make the sponge sugar, what I'm gonna do, um, I've greased up the end of a rolling pin a little so the sugar does not stick to it. And I'm gonna take a fork, stick it in my sugar, and just kinda, in theory, flick it back and forth. That didn't work out, so let's see. Take it and flick it back and forth over the rolling pin. I don't know if you can see it super well. It's pretty fine. I'm put it to the side. Ow. Sugar sharp. FYI. And keep going until you have the amount that you want. Ooh. And then finally, to serve this up, I don't really have an appropriate vessel for this, but what you really want is like a nice shallow bowl, like a, you know, a flat bottom kind of bowl. Um, I'm gonna put down a little pool of creme anglaise in the bottom. down as my island in the middle and top it off with a little nest of spun sugar. And there you have it. So here is my floating island. It's not the prettiest floating island but it still looks pretty good. And let me tell you, this is really tasty. The meringue has almost like a marshmallowy flavor and the vanilla paste makes this super vanilla-y and the sponge sugar gives a nice, pleasant crunch on top. So overall, a really fancy looking, and when it comes down to it, not all that complicated dessert. Hey Felix. Look at this. It's made of literally everything you like. Eggs, cream, more eggs. And I think this is one that the cat truly enjoys. Thanks for watching everyone and tune in next week for another episode of Monster Munchies. Bye!
Oh, boo, you're such a good boy. 